It turns out that actually most people uh, who are practicing in the United States are still not using the best method of diagnosing prostate cancer metastasis or prostate cancer that's spread outside of the prostate. There's actually really good evidence to support the use of newer technologies. And today we're going to talk about that evidence. We'll talk about the existing um, sort of standard of care that most people are using and the better method that's out there. Uh, because you actually can do uh, better than the traditional CT scan and bone scan. So without further hesitation, let's get into it. So the first thing we're going to talk about is what is the standard of care with diagnosing prostate cancer? And so for, for a long time, for many, many years, what we would do to look for prostate cancer that's spread is a CT scan with contrast, usually of the, the abdomen and the pelvis, uh, often the chest, and looking for any lymph nodes that are enlarged or looking for any abnormalities in the bone uh, or any other metastasis, such as to the liver or to the lung. In addition, uh, bone scans were done. This is a special kind of nuclear medicine scan where they look at your uh, bones and look for areas of bone breakdown and uh, or bone turnover. And these can be markers for prostate cancer that has spread. Now, this is what we did for many, many years, but these scans actually perform pretty poorly. And now we're starting to develop new technologies that allow for better uh, diagnosis of prostate cancer metastasis. And so one of those technologies being evaluated or has been evaluated and now has FDA clearance is kind of this, what I do as my part of my practice as standard treatment is called a PSMA PET scan. PSMA is actually a special tracer that binds preferentially to uh, prostate cancers. In particular, it tends to bind only to the more aggressive prostate cancers and, and binds very little to normal prostate tissue and uh, low grade prostate cancers. So here you can see that the PSMA marker is able to identify a tumor in the pelvic bone on the top left image, but this is not seen in the CT scan in the top right or the bone scan in the bottom left. However, six months later, the same lesion could be found uh, with time in that CT scan. So let's just jump into the data because the data is actually very powerful. And once you understand the data, I think it changes your perception a lot. So this is a publication from 2020, and it's a really, really, really well done study. And in this study, they took men with high-risk prostate cancer. These are the prostate cancers that are Gleason 8 and above, the ones that really are quite dangerous or have very high PSAs. In other words, these are the people who are the most likely have metastatic prostate cancer, and they randomized them. So here they show that they have essentially the control group that got the CT scan and bone scan, and then an experimental group that got the PSMA PET scan. Um, What's really interesting, and this is what makes this study so good, is that 14 days after the initial scan, they swapped uh, scans. So meaning everybody got every kind of scan. In other words, if you got a PSMA PET scan up front, they would wait two weeks and then they would do a CT and a bone scan afterwards. And this kind of study called a crossover study is really excellent because it allows you to validate the outcomes or validate the, the findings of one study versus the other study. In other words, one scan versus the other scan and see in the exact same patient how they perform. So as you can see, all the patients that enrolled had pretty much high risk features. They either had a very high PSA or had to have a grade group three or higher prostate cancer. You can look at one of my other videos on what grade groups are, but essentially these are the higher risk prostate cancers and the grade groups go from grade group one to grade group five. Grade group five is the worst kind of prostate cancer. Grade group one is the least dangerous kind of prostate cancer. We usually don't even treat grade group one prostate cancers. This is a lot of information, but let's go at it uh, piece by piece. And I think you'll understand why I'm so excited about the technology and why I universally use PSMA PET scans as uh, my mode of assessing for prostate cancer spread in my patients before we go to surgery. So here you're seeing uh, in blue, the uh, values for conventional imaging, which is the CT and bone scan, and in red, the PSMA PET scan. If we look at another test, which, another label, which is called specificity and sensitivity, and the one you really want to look for is sensitivity. And, and what sensitivity means is, if I order this test, what are the odds that it's going to pick up uh, something if it's really there? In other words, if the cancer has spread, what is the likelihood that this test will actually pick up if the cancer is really there? and that's called the sensitivity. And you can see that the sensitivity for a CT and bone scan for detecting any metastasis is actually really low. It's right here, around 
So you can see that if you had a bone scan and CT, but actually had cancer spread beyond the prostate, only about 35, 40% of the time would the CT scan and bone scan actually detect it, even if it was actually there, which is really remarkable. And you can see that's part of the reason why historically there was a rather high failure rate for radiation and surgery, because these tests that we were doing to stratify someone's risk of metastatic disease were essentially flawed. Now, when we compare this to the PSMA PET scan, we see that the sensitivity or the ability for the scan to detect metastasis is substantially higher. I mean, this is remarkably higher. Again, 89, 85 to 90% range likelihood of the PSMA PET, can, PET scan detecting a metastasis if it's actually there. And then, you know, okay, great. It's great to have a test that can detect something, but if it detects something falsely, if it has a bunch of false positives, that's not really useful. So how specific is it? In other words, uh, the, the term specificity is if the test is positive, how likely is it that that positive test is real? And you can see for both bone scan and CT, if you have a positive test, it's very likely it is in fact real. And you can see for both any metastasis, pelvic nodal metastasis, or distant metastasis. So if you were to take the, the information from this table away, really the main takeaway from this is that the bone scan and CT are actually pretty bad at detecting metastasis. But if metastasis is detected by a bone scan or CT, it's very likely that it's the real thing. However, the PSMA PET scan is much better at detecting the presence of metastasis. It's much better at telling you if the cancer is spread or not. And it's also a little bit better if the test is positive at being accurate at telling you, yes, this is in fact truly metastatic disease if the scan is positive. The authors of the study then took it a little bit further and they said, what, is the, what are the odds that we may perform one of these scans and the scan gives us kind of results that are equivocal? In other words, results that leave us a little bit unsure if they're positive or not. And we find that in the CT scan and Bode scan group, about 20, 25% of patients had uh, a, a finding that was equivocal, meaning yeah, the scan shows something, but we're not sure if it's real. That, you find, was also much less common with the PSMA PET scan at around 8, 9, 10%. So you can already start to see that the PSMA PET scan is much better at not only detecting the cancer, being accurate when it detects the cancer, and not giving you ambiguous results. So this is a real setup for a substantially better uh, way of looking for cancer metastasis. But there's more. And then to put a cherry on top, as if the uh, argument wasn't strong enough, the uh, authors of this paper also uh, put in a measure of the total radiation dose that a patient received by a conventional imaging, which was the CT and bone scan, versus the PSMA PET scan. And you can see by measuring the total dose, the radiation dose for the PSMA PET scan, since it's only one scan instead of two, was about half the radiation dose that was seen uh, when compared to the conventional imaging of CT and bone. So not only is the study uh, better at detecting cancer, more accurate detecting cancer, and more likely to impact your uh, decisions, it also uh, is one study instead of two and leads to less total radiation dose. So this is just a total slam dunk. The problem is that this technology is all new. FDA approval just came recently. Medicare just started paying for it uh, in the beginning of... Uh, 2023, I believe. So there are, there has been very slow adoption of what is going to be, in my opinion, the standard of care uh, going forward uh, when evaluating someone for the risk of prostate cancer spread. So the purpose here is I want to educate you guys so that you can request the best treatment possible. The most common question I get is, Doc, thank you for ordering this PSMA PET scan. I'm very happy we had the sort of most modern way of working things up. Um, the scan came back negative, showing no cancer outside of the prostate. How likely is it that that scan was correct? How likely is it that that scan says there is no evidence outside of the prostate and, and it's actually right? And I think that's actually a really, really, really sophisticated question because most people assume that medical tests are 100%. The medical test says this, I have this, this is definitely how it is. And that is almost never the case for anything in medicine. There's always a probability, there are false positives, there are false negatives, and understanding the data and the numbers is really, really important to empowering you to make smart decisions. So in this study, what they did is they tried to answer the question, is if my 
uh, PET scan is negative, my PSMA PET scan is negative, what is the likelihood that that's actually right? And when we look at the results, what we find is the specificity again here is very high, meaning the total uh, the likelihood that if you had a PSMA PET scan be positive, the likelihood that it's right is around 95%. In other words, if you had a PSMA PET scan and it found a, a area that was suspicious for metastasis, 95% of the time it is actually correct. But what you really want to know is called the negative predictive value. And what the negative predictive value is, is, is essentially our, um, like a st statistical way of answering this question. If your test says you do not have anything, how likely is it that's right? And this is the real piece of information you want. The negative predictive value of a PSMA PET scan is 81%. In other words, if you have a PSMA PET scan and it shows that there's no metastasis or no abnormality, no, no signal outside of the prostate that's suspicious for cancer, then 81% of the time, that will in fact be true. So to put it in the words of the author, it is clear that if a PSMA PET is positive, then disease is present. On the other hand, the negative predictive value was 0.81, indicating that 20% of patients who underwent prostatectomy with a negative PET scan will have nodes on pathology. In other words, a 20% chance that there actually was cancer in lymph nodes despite the scan being negative. So, you know, in the world of cancer, that is pretty good odds. 80% chance that you're going to not have cancer in those areas is much better than it used to be with the bone scan and CT. And if you're really trying to optimize and get the best thing you can out there, based on current standards, that would be the PSMA PET scan. So I hope this was very helpful for you. And my goal here is, again, like always, to help people have the information to find the best medical care they can. The reality in medicine, unfortunately, is that everyone does not have time or the resources or the capabilities to be studying the newest thing in every field at all times. So sometimes going around your care provider and educating the patient is the best way to help advocate for people so that you can get the best care you can. And that's my goal. I want to help you get better cancer care, or how can we make cancer care better? And that's the, the name of the channel. So again, I hope this was very helpful for you. If you want to contribute, uh, there is a Patreon link down below. Uh, but more than that, I would really appreciate it if you could share these videos with people who would benefit from them. Um, share the channel with people that you think may benefit from this. Because above all else, the goal here is to help people get the best possible care they can. There are some things we can control to improve the quality of care. There are some things we can do to make outcomes better. And every little step you can take can be additive to set you up to have a better outcome. So, so again, I hope this was helpful and I appreciate all the comments, all the support I'm receiving from people from all over the world. It's, it's been uh, very rewarding to see that I'm helping so many people. Um, and that's it for now. I'll be back with another video uh, soon. I think the next topic will be what happens if you don't treat prostate cancer because we actually have some studies that look at that. And I think it'd be very interesting for you guys to hear that. All right. Take care, everybody. Till next time.